So we will look at uh, one more aspect of uh, Husky Lens uh, in the first session that we have this one hour. And when you come back, then we will switch to Arduino. Uh, so this is the last one we are, we are, we are looking at object uh, uh, tracking. So you have done object classification. So most of the algorithms of Husky Lens work in a very similar way. Uh, okay, only two are different. One is the line following and the other is the object tracking. So I'm doing the object tracking and in object tracking, I'll, you know, teach you some things which will also apply to line following. So we will not do a project on line following, but if you want to try line following later, similar logic will apply. Okay. Uh, so, so, so before I go here, uh, let's talk about object tracking. So what happens in object tracking is that the, um, your Husky lens monitor just like any, like, you know, scratch stage also has these coordinates and, uh, uh, you know, your, your micro bit also has this coordinates, the 25 LEDs, uh, the uh, top left is zero, zero, and then, you know, uh, X and Y increase. So in all electronics, that is how, uh, you know, the numbering happens instead of X and Y being zero, zero at bottom left, it's always the top left, which is zero, zero in electronics, right? So in the same way, um, your Husky lens has these coordinates. It's like, you know, think of the stage in scratch. So your top left is zero, zero and your bottom right is 320. That means X axis goes from zero to 320 pixels and Y axis goes from zero to 240 pixels. And the center pixel is uh, 160, 120. So these are the coordinates on, of your Husky lens uh, screen. And hence, if you look at any object uh, in Husky lens, it Husky lens can report by using some programming blocks. It can report the position of that, uh, of that object and the position it will take will be like the middle point of that object. So in this case, the middle point is kind of roughly in the middle of the screen. And hence that will be that, uh, you know, 160, 120 coordinate of, of this car. So what I'm saying is that in Husky lens, when, when we say object tracking, Husky lens can tell you the position of that object on its screen. And actually, because it's a, a AI based system, it also kind of internally, it's predicting the path. So it's predicting that if, if the object is moving this way, where is it likely to be next and next and next and next? Okay, so it can say whether the tra trajectory is like this or is it straight or is it downward sloping? It has that predictive uh, uh, ability. And this predictive ability is very useful when you make some, uh, you know, kind of a robotic thing later, uh, you know, like let's say a line following robot or something like that, that when it is seeing, when the Husky lens will see a black line in front or any color line in front, it, it, it will be able to tell its coordinates so one, you can program things to say, if coordinates are like this, do something. And secondly, because it knows that if the line is turning, it, it kind of has a predictive ability to say that, you know, the, uh, the path will most likely be whatever straight or downward sloping, upward sloping like that. Okay. So that is uh, the ability we are going to use uh, in object tracking. And we will just do a simple project where, where we will tell Husky Lens to tell us the coordinates of the object that it is tracking as the object moves. So as the object moves, Husky lens will give us a live uh, position of that object. And then uh, later on, when you will do some more complex projects, you can actually use those coordinates to do something uh, like, you know, I'm saying if you're making a line following robot, you can make that by reading the line coordinates and telling the motors what to do based on whether the line is turning left or right. Okay. So that's what uh, we are going to learn next. And this is our last project uh, on Husky Lens and Microbit. And then we will move on to Arduino in the next session. Okay, so I have got the same setup here, which we were doing yesterday. So I've got a Microbit, okay. Uh, the Microbit is connected to my uh, laptop. And then I have got the pins. So I've got the Hus Husky Lens here. And the Husky Lens wires, the same thing. Blue wire is going to pin 19, green is going to pin 20, 
uh, red wire is going to the three volt and black is going to the ground. You don't really need the red wire because uh, I've also connected the Husky lens to a power supply. So uh, you can take the power off the micro bit or uh, you can use it uh, uh, with this USB. Okay. So that that is our setup. So I'm not doing anything on the micro bit other than writing the program. So even if you can't see the micro bit, it doesn't matter. Uh, but let's see. Now we have uh, same Husky lens. And what I want to do is I want it to learn about this car. Okay. So the story I have in mind is that there was a bank robbery and the, the thieves, uh, the robbers, they ran away in this red color car and the bank had this AI camera, uh, same as, you know, uh, Husky lens, let's say. And because Husky lens cameras of this nature can do object recognition, the camera took a photograph of the car in which the robbers ran and related to all other cameras in the city. And that's exactly how security systems work today. Okay. And it doesn't, I'm doing an object tracking here, but it could, um, it, you know, instead of object tracking, it could be face recognition. So I could have face recognition and then I could alert, let's say all the railway stations, all the bus terminals, all the airports to recognize a certain person. So if they are trying to run away from the country, that is how, you know, today's security systems work. Okay. So for this, you again, you're, uh, 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 you know, this wheel on the top left, and then you are selecting, uh, so you are selecting and you're going to object tracking now. Okay. So once you are in object tracking, you can focus on the object. So here I wanted to learn uh, the red about the red car. So I'm focusing on the red car and then I'm pressing this button and I'm keeping it pressed and moving it a little. Okay. So now it's saying it's learning that, that object and then I'm releasing it. Okay. Uh, and now it has assigned that object ID one. Okay. So first it was learning. Now it's uh, saying, so in object tracking, it will constantly switch between learning and object ID because it's still learning because if, if, if it, when the object starts moving, uh, it will track the object. Okay. So that's all. It's, it's exactly how we, we, you know, trained Husky lens to recognize other objects is the same here. And then if I'm saying the car is moving, if you can see, uh, uh, let's say, see that the car will appear, it will move across the screen. Okay. And once it recognizes, it's now tracking that object. Okay. And how, how well it will work. I mean, it, it, uh, it, it will work better for you, I hope. And even if there are multiple objects and look at it, there are two red cars it is still able to recognize our particular car or whatever car we trained it on. And it's constantly uh, tracking it. And what we will do next in the programming is we will ask Hussey Lens to report the coordinates. So remember I said the coordinates will go from X axis will go from zero to 360. So we, we will tell it to report the X coordinates and the Y coordinates of the object live. Okay, as it is moving across the screen, Husky lens will report it. Okay. Um, and uh, so I'm, we are just going to stop here, but I'm saying that then you can use your imagination to say that if Husky lens can do this kind of, you know, tracking and reporting, then you can do many other things. Uh, like I'm saying, all security systems are based like that. Uh, even, you know, these days, the drones and all, when you talk about drones and intelligent missiles that they throw, that's how they work, that they can track it live. They can predict the trajectory of the object and keep following it. I mean, there are many types of missiles There could be heat seeking missiles and whatever, but this is, you know, one way of doing it. Okay. So that this is what we are trying to do now. And so the next step is we will write the code. Okay. Um, so, uh, I'm going, I'm going to go to the same make code, make code.microbit.org. I'm going to start a new project, Husky object tracking, let's say, and, uh, here. I'm kind of just repeating what we did yesterday. First, you go to extensions and you search for Husky Lens. So this is the DF robot Husky Lens. You add this extension. 
and the first few commands are the same. So you go, you initialize, and remember that uh, we are using the I2C protocol. Okay, so the way electronic equipment talk to each other, it could be I2C or it could be UART. So we are using I2C. Uh, so that's why the pins are in 19 and 20. And then we are saying we have to declare what algorithm are we using. So we are using object tracking. Okay. And then the third command that we always have to use is Husky lens request data once and save it into the result. So that, so that, uh, and this is inside a forever loop. So it's constantly telling Husky lens, uh, Husky lens and microbit are constantly talking to each other to say whether that data that we've trained it on, is it there or not? Once all this is done, then we start with the conditional statements. Uh, so we can, we use a conditional statement. So if true, and we can check yesterday, some of you were having a problem. So I'm saying we can actually first check whether, because we've only trained it in one ID. So I can put a if conditional statement to say if uh, ID one is learned from the result so that we are sure that Husky Lens has learned that ID. If it is learned, then we can put another if loop here. And then we can say if that particular ID of that frame is um, uh, if check if ID one is on the frame from the result. Okay. Then if you remember last time uh, yesterday, we were just putting things inside. So I can, you know, I can put something like something simple, like show some number or show some uh, something on the, uh, uh, on the micro bit, or I could have added a servo here, or I could have gone into pins and I could have said, make some pin high pin, some pin low and connected motors accordingly. So I can do all of that is the same. So whatever you want to do. But here I'm just showing you that how Husky Lens reports the X and Y axis. So if you go back to Husky Lens, then it this one, this command here, it says Husky Lens get X center of ID one. Okay, so this is what, this is like a reporting block. It will tell us the uh, X coordinate of the object as it moves across Husky Lens monitor. Okay, so I'm going to get this. And now I want this to be reported, uh, right? Uh, uh, somewhere I want uh, I want uh, uh, micro bit to recognize it. So how do I do that? I will have to read it somewhere. So let's say I get a basic and I say, show me a number. Okay. And then I say, show me this X center. Uh, so this will only actually give me uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 one number as in on, on the, it, this will get displayed on the micro, but I don't want to display it on the micro bit. I want to display it on, um, uh, on Husky lens. Okay. So Husky lens monitor should show me this. So if I put this, uh, this command, the way I have put it right now, I will show the X coordinate on micro bit screen. Okay. But it's a, it's a three digit number. And in micro bit, you know, the things will get start scrolling, it will take a long time. It won't update live. So I don't want to use this command. Instead, I actually uh, 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 want to go into Husky Lens and use some command there, which shows me the result. I think it's under in more. Uh, yeah, so this is the command which says, Husky Lens show some custom text at some X and Y coordinate. And remember, I told you X and Y zero zero is on top left. So let's say I am saying little inside. So maybe X 20 and let's say whatever Y 20. Okay. So I want, I want Husky lens to report the X center of the object at this location. Okay. So if I try to put this inside, it will not go. It will not go because here it is expecting a text. And this is a number. So this has got nothing to do with uh, Husky Lens. This is simply, uh, you know, the way coding works. So you can't put, you, you are saying this is a variable which where, you know, uh, alphanumeric value is expected. It will not take a numerical value. So what you can do, and this is a, you know, make code uh, uh, coding thing. You can go in text, okay? And uh, in this, uh, you can say that convert 
So this command in microbit will convert something into text, some numerical value into text, and then it will get displayed. So I'm saying, I'm putting it here. So what I'm saying is in the, uh, the program is that if Husky Lens has learned the result, and if that object one is on the screen, then it is going to report the X center of that, uh, of that object uh, at on the Husky Lens at this value that we have said X0, uh, sorry, X20, Y20. Did you understand this much, right? So th this is what we are saying. This is how we are asking Husky Lens to report live as the object moves across the screen, okay? And then I'm going to just duplicate the command. And now I'm saying also report the Y center. And as you can see, if you do a drop down here, it can also report the width of the object on the screen. It can also report the height of the object that it is seeing. So these are very useful commands uh, when you do you know, more complex projects later on and you want to determine uh, something, some like you know, the X center, Y center, or the height or the width of the object, then you can use any of these reporting commands. Okay, so that's it, that's, that's, that's the code. Um, and then I'm just going to, you know, download this to my micro bit. So hopefully uh, it's working. So I should do is it's uh, not working properly. So what I should do is I should go back into Husky Lens and there is one command here which says uh, just clear the data. So I'll just clear the data in case there is some old data in the uh, Husky Lens. I think it's in more. Uh... So all these you know commands are something you can you know look at later uh, 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 because they may be useful in the kind of projects you are doing not uh, yeah clear all so i'm just adding this thing here to say uh, clear all the whatever was the custom text earlier and then i'm downloading this hopefully it will work now Okay, uh, so for some reason it's not reporting, but I'll I'll look into that. Uh, um, but I'm going to uh, stop here and let you try this code. I will also copy paste uh, this particular code uh, on on our chat, and you try. And uh, either uh, if you can, if you're finished, then we can we'll uh, we can meet again. Or if you're going for tea after this, then we can meet after you know you've had your tea. Uh, Nityaka, you can tell me. Um,